Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be collabing with Bargain Bethany again today and we're going to be doing some bathroom DIYs for you. I have a few Dollar Tree bathroom DIYs and then a few that are not Dollar Tree. So with all that being said, let's jump right into today's DIYs. Okay guys, so I just wanted to show you this little tip that I found to be really helpful. I got this parchment paper from Walmart. That way when I get paint and whatever on my work surface, I can quickly just change it out. So I took two crates and eight of the little cubes and I take the stickers off of them. Originally I was gonna use a different stain, but I didn't like it. And in my bathroom, I have a mirror that is in the Jacobian. So I did just stain all of the pieces in that stain. Now for the little drawers, I only stained the front of the drawer and then the rest of the box. So while that's drying, I take these chalkboard tags from Dollar Tree and I just pop the little clips right off of them. And I found the easiest way to do this was to take a pair of pliers and they pop right off. Next, I take some white Waverly chalk paint and I give these chalkboard tags two good coats. That way none of that black will show through. I then take my mini chip brush and some ink Waverly chalk paint and these mini chip brushes are linked in my Amazon store in the description box and I just dry brush all the way around the edges of each tag. I'm just going to put out a disclaimer that my little munchkin's right here with me. So if you guys hear her, she's just in her playpen playing. So she's having a good old time. So I figured I would just mention that. Again, I take my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I dry brush the little boxes. And for the front of the drawers, I only dry brush the front. I don't worry about the sides of the drawers, but I do dry brush the sides of the boxes that the drawers are in. So once I had all my boxes and the crates dry brushed, then I just take some hot glue and I glue the tags right in front of the shapes in the front of these boxes. Now you could always turn the shapes to the back, but I wanted to be able to utilize the entire box. So that is why I glued these right down to cover those shapes. Once I had them all glued down, then I bought these I believe they're called uh, label pulls from Amazon. I will have them linked in my Amazon store as well. I just screw them down to the middle of the tags. Now at first I started to use this small screwdriver and then I realized that I had a drill bit that would fit these little tiny screws. So I did end up just using my drill for the rest of them because it cut down on the time to put these on by a significant amount but you can do it with a little screwdriver no big deal it just takes a little bit longer now if you guys have been around you know that my OCD kicks in sometimes and I could see the brown edge on these chalkboard tags so I did just go in with a small brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I covered over them after that, then it's time to glue all these boxes together. So I glued four at the bottom, then the two crates, and then four at the top. I then held them together with some clamps to ensure that they would have a nice, sturdy, and even hold. 
and then you guys that was it for this i am going to show you a picture of it all decorated but i am going to show you how i decorated this little storage thing for your bathroom oh before i forget i did add feet to this so after i put it all together and i put the decor in it i realized that i wanted to put feet on it so what i did was take eight of these little square cubes from dollar tree and i glued two of them together with some hot glue leaving me with four so i then just mixed up like a stain the stain that i use takes forever to dry so i wanted to get something very similar that would dry quick so i took some antique wax by waverly and some chalkboard paint from dollar tree with some water and i mixed that together until i had like a stain consistency i then just painted the cubes and it did turn out looking just like this color so i was really pleased with that and it dried really quickly like i said which was a huge bonus once i had them all painted and they dried then of course i dry brushed those with some white waverly chalk paint so that they did not look out of place and then i glued those to each corner with some hot glue I love the way that this turned out you guys it's so functional it can hold so many different trinkets and all types of things in your bathroom so I know for sure you'll let me know in the comments down below what you think of it. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy to have you. My name is Melissa and I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs. Farmhouse decor is my specialty and much more. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love if you would become part of the family. You just want to click that red subscribe button and then tap the bell and all. That way you're notified every single time I upload. That way you don't miss another Dollar Tree moment. Also, I want to thank Bethany so, so much from Bargain Bethany for collabing with me again. We had so much fun on our first collab. If you haven't seen that video, I will leave it in the cards in the right hand corner to check out. I was so excited to do that with her and so grateful and we had such an amazing time that we did it again. So if you don't know who Bargain Bethany is, which let's face it everybody knows who bargain bethany is then definitely check out the link in the description box i will leave her channel and her video link there also last but not least i want to show you guys the earrings of the week each week on my channel i thought that it would be fun to share a pair of earrings of the week because i don't get to wear them that often so i figured that i would wear them for you guys so i did get these from walmart surprise surprise i love them so much i love the color this is like my favorite color anyway they're very light and very like you can barely tell that they're there and i just love them so so much i got them in the jewelry section at walmart so if you are looking for them then just check the jewelry section so anyway with all that being said let's jump back into today's diys okay guys so next i'm going to show you the diys that go in this little cabinet and on the side of it and they're super duper easy so i'm just going to do them all in one shot so i take the stickers off of these bud vases that i got at dollar tree and i give them one coat of waverly chalk paint while those are drying i had this little candle again from dollar tree that i wasn't too fond of the label so i did just paint over that and while that's drying i took this little i guess you can call it a vase or container that had a succulent in it once again from dollar tree and i just dry brushed all the way around this little pot 
and I focused on the edges. I then took this boxwood pick from Walmart and I just cut some of the greenery down and then I stuck it into where the foam was where I took out the succulent. Now, because these crates aren't very um, tall when you lay them on their side, I couldn't leave much room between the pot and the greenery, so I did uh, put it into the foam as much as possible. Next, I took this little decor piece that I got from Dollar Tree as well, painted it white, and then I took my chalk couture letter stencils and I just stenciled on relax now technically these are called transfers but sometimes you guys don't know what I mean when I say transfers but they are a bit different from a stencil um, so I did just want to mention that and I will leave all the chalk couture items that I use in a link in the description box keeping in mind that you can add or subtract from your cart i just like to have them all in one place in case somebody wants to uh, get them all or just one or the other then like i said they're all in one place but i just took that little relaxed sign and i dry brushed the edges surprise surprise that one was finished really quick and easy decor um, to fit in here and I love the way that it turned out but I then take some buffalo check ribbon from Dollar Tree and I glue it around this little candle be careful of your fingers and I just thought that it was cute as is so you could add a bow or something but I really just like the simplicity of it so I just left that one the way that it was now for this little greenery pot or whatever you want to call it I took some jute and I just randomly wrapped it around securing it with some hot glue I then made a triple bow. I have a bow trick. I will leave it in the cards up above. If you haven't seen my bow tutorial video, I show you how to do 11 different bows perfectly every single time, and this bow trick is included in that video. Next, I I couldn't figure out where I wanted to place it and then I realized that it would look best on the little greenery pot so I did just secure that with some hot glue and then you guys that was it for decorating the inside of this little um, storage shelf I guess you can call it so once I was done that then I worked on these vases I just took my finger sander which is also linked in my Amazon favorites and I just randomly distress all the way around these vases. Next, I did the same exact thing that I did with the candle. I just took that same buffalo check ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree and I glued those around kind of near the top of these vases. I then made a double jute bow and I glued the, that to the middle of the ribbon. You guys, I'm funny. I like things matchy matchy. So let me know if you would do like a different pattern or different variation or if you would have your stuff matching as well. Moving on to the next project, this might be one of my favorites, not too sure, but I take this poplar that I had from a previous video. In my previous video, a subscriber had mentioned that I was wrong about how much they were, and I thought that I was right, but she was totally correct. It was a dollar and change per foot, so definitely just get some yardsticks and sand them down. But what I did was I took all my pieces, I cut the longer pieces 18 inches, and then for the middle pieces, going across all together with both side pieces was 15 inches. Once I had those pieces cut, then I cut the X pieces. I found that the easiest way to get your perfect X is to lay it out and then take another piece of whatever you're using, lay it on top of each side if that makes sense, and then mark it 
that way basically you know where your x pieces are going to meet those boards if that makes any sense once i had them cut down then i do go in with the same stain the jacobian and i stain all my pieces so i then cut pieces for the shelves and those are 15 inches long each i cut three for each shelf so six all together stain those as well and then i cut down a small stir stick six pieces and i glued the pieces together down the sides with some wood glue and then i secured it with the smaller stir stick pieces i did glue one to the uh like front and back i guess you can say and then into the middle and then i use that same faux stain that i made with the paint and the wax and i uh, stain those pieces as well just so that way they didn't look out of place I did glue down those stir sticks with some hot glue and wood glue just so that it would have a really nice hold and then I laid out the back of our shelf and I glued all those pieces down now I checked to make sure which pieces I wanted in the or which side I wanted in the front and I laid those pieces down and then I glued it with some hot glue and wood glue as well then securing it once again with some smaller stir sticks as well as some of some of the large popsicle sticks that I had on hand that I also get from Home Depot I then had these scrap pieces of square dowels these square dowels are linked in my Amazon store and I cut them down so that way the shelves would have something to sit on and it would give it more stability so I did cut these down to I believe 12 inches I did not cut them to go all the way across but I cut them so that way they had a little bit of space on each side I also cut a longer piece for our towel holder and then I used that faux stain to paint all them so that again they looked like they belong. Now I knew that this needed a little bit more stability so I took my scrap pieces of the poplar and I kind of held them to the side of the shelf and to the top of where this little decor piece ends and I just kind of marked where the pieces need it to be just to have little side pieces on it so again it would give it more stability I cut them down and then stained them with the Jacobian while those were drying I took some chicken wire from Dollar Tree yes that's right I said Dollar Tree I showed you what the package looks like but if you can't find it at Dollar Tree you can get it at Walmart for really cheap you actually get a huge roll for almost six dollars so it's definitely a good deal just look in the garden section or you can order it online but I cut a piece down to size and then I took my electric stapler and I just stapled the chicken wire to the back I also stapled where the X part was so that the chicken chicken wire held nicely to it next surprise surprise I take my mini chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I dry brush all the pieces now I always say this I know that dry brushing is not for everybody if you don't like the dry brushing just skip that step I then take some wood glue and hot glue and I glue down the pieces where the shelves are going to lay. Now I kept picking it up and looking at it to make sure that the pieces were level. So I'm sorry that it was out of frame but all I did was just glue that to the bottom of each of where the cross pieces meet at the top and the bottom where the shelves are going to go on and then I glue the shelves down with once again hot glue and some wood glue I also glue down the little side pieces I thought that it would look really nice and give it stability like I said a hundred times <laughs> but um, once again I glue those down with the same uh, glue that I did the rest of it mm -hmm. 
so for the towel holder I took some of those wooden cubes from Dollar Tree and once again used that faux stain to paint these once those were dry or while those were drying I should say I took these two little command hooks that I had in my stash and I used the chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree and I gave them a good coat now if I did this again I would probably paint those with some Waverly chalk paint but honestly you can't really tell so any paint will do but this paint when you paint it on is I don't even know how to explain it but the chalk paint just paints shiny surfaces much better because it sticks to it um, a lot better but like I said it doesn't really matter so whatever black paint you have on hand will do once those were dry then I glued the little command hooks to the squares making sure that they were even so I just uh, put them side by side and I glued them down again making sure they were even next I took my mini chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I dry brushed those little hooks you guys I guess this is becoming a habit for sure but I just can't stay away from the dry brushing I love it so much let me know in the comments if you prefer dry brushing or no dry brushing but all I did was glue those down to the bottom and then I put my square dowel in and my towel over it. I also screwed in some sawtooth hangers to the back, hung it up and look how amazing it was. I showed you the before and the after so you can get an idea why I built this. I hated that circle towel holder so I definitely wanted something more farmhouse and I just love it so much. I know you'll let me know in the comments down below what you think. I also wanted to show you just like a picture of the bathroom that way you can get kind of the idea of my aesthetic in here and I I just love taking cheap items like wood and turning it into high-end decor. So I just want to thank my coffee supporters. Thank you Jana Loves Paper, Anonymous, Gus and Finney, and Kate for buying me a coffee. If you enjoy my work and want to buy me a coffee and get a shout out each week, go to www.buymeacoffee.com slash all things crafty or follow the link in the description box and I just appreciate every single one of you rather you just watch my videos um, you can help your favorite uh, you can help your favorite creators just by watching ads to 20 to 30 seconds liking commenting there's many ways to support so don't think that I don't appreciate every single one of you. So moving on to the next project, I thought that I had a clip of me opening these canvases, but they're the six by eight canvases. I used my staple pull and I pulled all the staples out. I removed the canvas and then I used that same faux stain and I painted these with that color, which I think it still looks like the Jacobian which is why I keep using it and then I um, stapled some chicken wire to the backs of these as well. I then used some wood glue and some hot glue to glue them together and I took this cork sticker I guess it is and I cut down a piece for the top and the bottom and I glued that from the back to the piece of cork now this is sticky but I left the sticky part on or I left the backing on to the sticky part and you'll see why in a minute I then cover that cork up with some ribbon that I got from Walmart and I glued it down with some hot glue next I took this wooden windmill that I got from Hobby Lobby a while back but I do believe it's an item they carry all the time and I took my metallic silver paint and I painted the entire thing. Originally I was going to leave the bottom part on it so I took my sponge and some elephant Waverly chalk paint and I just randomly dab some of that paint on and then I take a little bit of the white Waverly chalk paint and randomly dab that on all around as well. Now this is going to look like galvanized metal 
and like I said originally I left the bottom on and I took some antique wax and just randomly put little you know brush strokes and dots to make it look like it's antiqued so once I was done this I didn't really like the way that it looked with the bottom kind of hanging off so I did just cut off the bottom I painted that with some antique wax where I cut it just so that way you couldn't see the natural wood showing through and then I glued that down to the middle I've been wanting to make an earring holder because I have so many earrings and then they're just in a drawer and I can't see what I have. So I came up with this idea and I left the backing to the cork sticker because I knew that if I put studs through there then it, want, it would want to stick to the backing so that is why I left it but look how amazing this turned out at first when I was done I was not too sure about this project but once I added the earrings I was so pleasantly surprised let me know in the comments down below if you would make one of these for your jewelry next we're going to make a few decor pieces for our little shelf we just built I took one of these galvanized houses from Dollar Tree and I took some small popsicle sticks I held them up to where the roof is and I just kind of marked where I needed to cut so that way two of the popsicle sticks for each side would fit together nicely so once I had the first cut then I put it up to another one and mark where I need to cut the second one that way I have perfect cuts for each side next I glued it down with some hot glue and I did glue straight to the popsicle stick because anytime you glue straight to galvanized metal it dries really really quickly I then took some flower greenery that I got from Walmart I pulled off two of the little pieces and then I cut the ends off because where these pieces are together there's like a circle and I didn't want it to be seen on this decor piece I then just glued them down around that circle so that way it would kind of look decorative and I love the way that this looks but I did go a step further I was gonna leave it as is but because the base of this has kind of like a brown distressing on it I wanted the roof to match so I did just take that faux stain that I made and my mini chip brush and I just very lightly dry brush the roof pieces and then of course you guys know I'm extra so I did kind of go to the bottom of this um, base or to the top of this base I should say and just blend it in to make it look like they both were from the same material and then literally you guys that was it for this one like I always say sometimes less is more and I really love the way it turned out actually I lied you guys <laughs> I forgot that I did um, put some faux rust on this one I literally just dabbed some antique wax and then took my paper towel and dabbed off the clumps and look how amazing this looks it goes with all my decor and I love that it took about 10 minutes to make for the next project I wanted to make a little tray and I got this clock from the Target dollar spot last year around this time and I just never used it so I took the clock parts off of it and I also had these I don't even know what these are called but I got them from Walmart and I think they go like on the ends of dowel rods to make them look a little bit more decorative so I just glued them as feet to the bottom of this clock next I take my chalk couture transfer I did use this in a previous video and I couldn't wait to use it again so originally I took some white and black chalk paste and I wanted kind of like a ombre effect but I should have like did one um like put it on there wipe one line of the excess and then wipe it off on a paper towel but I just went with it and then wiped it off and I didn't like the way it looked so it was so quick to just go back over it with some white and I love that some of the black is showing through but it took me literally three minutes to put this together 
for a little tray in my bathroom and I love the way that it turned out. If you want to learn more about Chalk Couture, just shoot me an email or a message on Facebook. I would love to talk chalk with you. So moving on to the next project, this is another super duper quick and easy one. I take one of these house decor pieces from Dollar Tree and I remove the backing from the frame by running my knife across the inside edge and then the outside edge. I then just give it a distressed coat of white Waverly chalk paint and while that's drying, I take my home is my happy place chalk transfer I cut it off of the rest and then for the top lettering that's in cursive I use my storm paste and then for happy place I use my black chalk paste once I chalk that on I revealed it look how amazing this is you guys that's the magic of chalk couture um, you just literally fuzz your transfer so that it doesn't stick so bad that it stretches you lay it down, you chalk on it, pull back the transfer, boom, no weeding, no mess, no nothing, and you have gorgeous images. I then transferred on the little mini house to the top of it, and once again, I distressed with that faux stain around the frame of this little house piece. I secured the frame back down to the backing with some uh, hot glue, and I made a simple bow with some gingham or buffalo check ribbon and a double jute bow that I glued together and then I glued it to the top of this house. And once again, you have a super simple high-end looking decor piece that you can make on a budget and very, very quickly. I love the way that this looks on this little shelf and it also hides my... Uh, plug in the back that plug drives me nuts it's big and bulky because it's a GIF outlet and I love that this covers that Okay guys, so for the last DIY, now many of you that have been around for a while know that I live in a mobile home and I cannot stand these doors. My husband said that he would change them out, but he literally works two jobs every single day and I know that right now he doesn't have the time to change the doors out, so I came up with a different solution. Now this is not my idea. I found it on Facebook, but I cannot find the original person person who put this out. So if anybody knows who it is, please leave it in the comments. I would love to give the person credit because I always think that credit should be given where credit is due. This was a wonderful idea. I love the way that it turned out. So please let me know if you guys know who that is. So I had a towel rack holder, I guess you want to call it, on this door we took the other door off because we never use it but I we did leave this one on and I just started by taking off the hardware to the door the towel holder and the um, or I took off the handle I took off the towel holder and then I used some alcohol to wipe this down I then cut a piece that would fit down the whole door and I also cut another piece that would fit on the side because this contact paper only went about two thirds of the way. Now it does take a minute to get this lined up perfectly so just take your time and use like a spatula or a old card or I had my Cricut tool to smooth down all the bubbles. Once I had both of the pieces uh, you know, on there, then I did take my sharp utility knife and just ran it across the edge of the door to cut off the excess because I did leave a little bit of overhang at the top and the bottom so that I can make sure this lined up perfectly. I then cut three more pieces for the middle piece going across and the bottom and the top piece kind of going on an angle kind of like I did my barn doors last week now 
I am going to mention that I did go back in and cut a piece for the top and the bottom kind of like we were framing it out but at the time that I filmed this part I was so excited to get this done that I didn't even think about it. So once I had those pieces down then I did very lightly cut the excess off to the bottom and the top piece and then I cut around where the handle is going to go. So once I did that, then I took my handles. I did just buy hall and closet handles because this is not a door that we use to like lock it or anything. So I did just install those door handles and look how amazing this looks without the part I'm gonna show you here in a minute. I did add a wreath to this. It looks so amazing. I love the way it turned out. I wish I could thank the person who originally came out with this idea and I am just so grateful to her. So I realized that once I was editing this video, I'm like, shoot, I forgot to add the top and the bottom piece and the hinges. So I picked up some multi-purpose drawer liner that I got from Home Depot. I printed off a hinge from Google. I just searched hinges. I cut those out and then I hot glued those to the cross pieces at the top, the middle, and the bottom. So that was it for this video, you guys. Thank you, Bethany, so, so much for collabing with me once again. I really enjoy talking to you, and I enjoy getting to know you. So once again, thank you very much. Thank you to all the new and old subscribers for stopping by. Let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite per usual. I wanted to give you a shot of my entire bathroom. I love the way that these DIYs added to my already farmhouse bathroom. It was missing a little something here and there. So I do think that this filled my void. <laughs> anyway, if you're not subscribed already, just hit that subscribe button. I see that a lot of you come back each week, but you're not subscribed. So you might as well just become part of the family. We would love to have you. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it. Share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it because those thumbs up and those shares really help my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me just a bit more. And as always, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely gorgeous, you are worthy, and I love you with all my heart and soul, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!